hands. Action! And all of a sudden, all this glass hits the ground, and then the gun comes down, and we see the gun. The right. silencer. Then we come, we dolly a bit, he unscrews the silencer. Now now right. Carl gets in, right, I got you. he gets in, and Steve gets in with a three shot. But this is a... I mean, every movie, I just try to mind the opportunities. You know, every movie is exciting, because they kind of tell me what it needs. The movie informs me. I've said this before. But when I get a, a script in a, in a genre that I'm not accustomed to, wow, I, I, it's, it's, it's like taking an amazing course, I guess. I become fully, totally immersed in that subject matter, and, and that's so exciting for me. And uh, this was an, a very exciting era, but a very painful shoot, because it was very painful to tell the story. You know, I think Stephen's always shown himself as being a remarkable director with actors, and I think actors obviously respect him. I think he he's always looking for something fresh and original when he's when he's asking for a certain kind of performance. And in this case, we had so many different scenes and and requirements for the actors. They were coming in some of them for two or three days at a time, and that was it. So there was a high energy operating all the time on the set. Why do I understand you better in Greek than in English? What is this? Literally the first day of shooting, he arrived in the morning, we were shooting that evening. And it was a big long shot, it was very, very complicated, and he sort of turned to me and just said, you know, you know, just dive in at the deep end. I'm like, okay. Now we're wide here. And the wife gets pushed away by the guy. I think much like Private Ryan in Schindler's List, Stephen approached this movie very realistically. That's what he wanted to do more than anything, to try to capture what might have really happened. He didn't want to give this a kind of glossy um, Hollywood look to it. He didn't want to have each shot so pre-planned and each scene so overly rehearsed that I think it brings an energy to the movie that makes you feel like you are dropping into these moments as they might have happened. Stop! 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 Supposedly, there was a moment where Avner wound up sharing a, a safe house by himself with a group of people from one of the Palestinian groups. Um, and I sort of thought that it would be a really interesting moment to, uh, if they all wound up in the same place together, to actually have Avner and one of these guys have a talk. You can't take back a country you never had. You sound like a Jew. Fuck you, I'm the voice inside your head telling you what you already know. It felt when we were filming it, and I think it's always felt in the script, Stevens referred to it a number of times, as being a kind of an important moment to really sort of quiet everything down and just let you listen to this very simple exchange. You kill Jews and the world feels bad for them and thinks you are animals. Yes, but then the world will see how they've made us into animals. There is a subliminal marking of the places where murder happens with the color red in this movie. It's not absolutely consistent everywhere, but there is the presence of red throughout the movie just as a reminder, I suppose, subliminally of the level that this is really about, which is the spilling of blood. And it's ultimately, I suppose, what runs through the movie. If, if some movies have water running through, this one has blood. There were moments that we were shooting where I knew, based on research, that, that what we were doing was totally real. And um, the set would always feel different that day. And, and, you know, it was odd. You would meet the actor who was playing the character that, that, that your character was about to kill, and you'd be having a great conversation and having a really enjoying each other's company. And I, I would always, it sounds like a joke, but it's, it's not. I would always make a point of really wanting to meet and get to know the person I was about to kill as an actor and as a character. And um, it's always a, a weird feeling. It, it definitely is and it, it, ha it has a very big, big effect. And then there are some really incredible moments. The, the scene 
between myself and Balchir on the on the balcony was really really haunting, even just as an actor to do. You know, I remember when I read it, I remember thinking, oh my god, imagine being out on that balcony and talking to this person whom you're about to blow up. Well, to shoot it is is equally as um, you know disturbing and and weird. But I think one of the most beautiful deaths in the film is the death of Hans and we shot that um, in Budapest on the Danube there and as we're approaching his body and we don't know that he's yet dead the lights go out on the bridge and on the the river which was completely unplanned um, as, as it was approaching sunup it actually adds to the scene it's really kind of remember it was spooky when we did it um, but it's such an incredibly powerful visual of him sitting there like a statue it's like something you'd see in Central Park and then you just have the two characters sit down next to him in that shot of the three of them from behind. I mean, that to me was one of the most moving parts of the film. I initially did not want to recreate the Munich event. I wanted to just rely on the existing documentary footage, but then I felt that there needed to certainly be a constant reminder of what this story is hinging on, lest we forget. So for me, it was very, very important to continue to remind the audience and these characters, uh, because especially Avner, who sort of replays the experience several times throughout the course of the, of the story. We realized we were getting close to the day that we were gonna start filming the Munich Games massacre. And it was like suddenly switching gears and making a new movie. It was, it was really hard to film, but it was also really transformative for everybody. We all felt that there was something tremendously significant that we were doing, and that in a certain sense, after filming a huge part of the film, we were now making the heart of the movie. I think there was a little uncomfortableness at the beginning, especially the fears of the actors playing Arabs. They didn't want to be seen as people who actually, you know, um, felt the same way that the characters that they were portraying. And, um, but pretty quickly, we just became very comfortable with each other. And that first week of rehearsal was just a lot of talking and a lot of everyone just trying to sense out everybody else and trying to get a, a good sense of the story. What's very powerful for me was that one of the actors that portrayed the, one of the Olympians that got murdered was an actual son. Guri Weinberg played Moshe Weinberg, but one of the coaches the idea of actually walking through the footsteps of my dad and what he went through was so intriguing to me because you know when you hear the stories it's all about tidbits so it doesn't all make sense so when you walk through it it, it sort of makes everything real you know and I really understood exactly what he went through as much as I could you know He's the bravest person on this film, and he and we connected it because I lost my father at the age of nine um, by gunfire, and so I connected with with Guri right away. And so the shooting of that scene was harder for me than my own death scene. And I even told him before we, the day before we started shooting of that scene, I said, "If you need anything from me, you know, like when we're shooting, just you know, let me know." And he's like, "He's like, no. He's like, you know, just." do whatever you have to do. You know, we're both actors. He's really, he's been very professional about it, which is amazing. There was one thing I always said on the set. If, if the world could actually see the Israeli actors and the Arab actors together, there wouldn't be any more problems in the world. It was the most amazing thing that I have ever experienced. I've gotten more support from the Arab actors than I've ever gotten regarding the story. It was a very emotional catharsis, I think, for both Arab actors playing Palestinians and um, the Israelis playing the Israeli members of the team. Very, very hard for everybody. And so I didn't, wasn't thinking so much of technique, I was just thinking about holding my cast together and keeping everybody on an even keel because it was hard. It was a, a, a rugged couple of weeks. By the end of the film, I felt very much like, I mean, I felt like him all the way through, but I, it was almost in sync. I mean, by the end, we were shooting pretty much the end of the movie at the end of the shoot, and by then I just felt like I looked. I mean, I just felt very similar to, uh, to, to the character. You end up taking on a lot of the character's state of mind. I mean, I remember one night coming home from work and cursing my makeup artist for not having removed all my makeup. And I washed my face, 
and wiped it with a special makeup remover and there was nothing on it. And then it suddenly dawned on me that the circles and rings that I was trying to, and the red that I was trying to remove from my face was, was mine. You want your daughter to grow up in exile. I want evidence. And the end of the movie was a scene between Jeffrey Rush's character and Avner. We've decided to photograph the scene on the shore of uh, Jersey. We're actually looking at, at Manhattan from the other side and the light is very kind of overcast, you know. And it's a very sad scene because it's the scene where Avner's hoping and expecting some kind of reassurance that what he's done was the right thing. He's completely broken down. He's looking for guidance. He's looking for explanation why he's done what he's done and he got nothing. Did we kill to replace the terrorist leadership or the Palestinian leadership? You tell me what we've done. You killed them for the sake of a country you now choose to abandon. The country your mother and father built, that you were born into. You killed them for Munich, for the future, for peace. And towards the end of the scene, the camera is moving up and panning to the left, and you're seeing where the World Trade Center used to be. And it was so relevant to us at that moment in terms of the story. Eventually, the Arab states will rise against Israel. They sworn to destroy us. Unless we learn to act like them, we will never defeat them. Every now and then you get to be involved in a story that you think is going to reach out, and maybe in some little way it might change the world a bit. And I think in this case, I don't think the movie's going to necessarily change the world, but I think it will highlight the debate. I think if it gets people all over the world at least in, engaged in the discussion, then I think we've succeeded. I think the thrill for me in making this picture was that I I got a chance to work from one of the greatest scripts I've ever worked with in my life. I mean, there have been many great scripts that I've been blessed with as a director. But this script is one of the best, one of the very, very best screenplays I've ever had the honor to, to you know, to translate. And, um, and that was one of the greatest thrills for me about making Munich. Well, we are tragic men, butcher's hands, gentle souls. Do you know why we're here? Hey, it's Lisa here. Did you know that during the production of Steven Spielberg's classic film Jaws, three full-size prop sharks were built to portray the title villain of the film? Now, more than 40 technicians were involved in making these monstrosities, and their construction caused the budget to skyrocket. Now, the problem was that they kept breaking down in the water. This forced Spielberg to film many scenes without the shark, using camera angles to hide where the shark would be, and even filming scenes from the shark's point of view. Now, this ironically led to a groundbreaking way of filming a monster movie. Hmm. Now remember to click here below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.